And I'm guilty of this too, even with all of the work that I've done on myself, even with all of the people that I've coached, even with all of the things that I know and the knowledge that I have and the work that I do and the practices that I, that I teach and that I embody, I still have moments of being like, when I get there, when I arrive, then I'll feel the thing. We're back, baby, with a brand new season of the It's Fucking Spiritual podcast. Join us each week as we have unfiltered conversations about how to transform your life. Our mission is to usher in a new era of spirituality where you don't have to be all love and light to live a life of alignment. Here, we honor all of it, the profound and the profane, the magic and the messy, and all things that make you human. So let's discuss the truth behind transformation and be unapologetic in our evolution. From manifestation to money, embodiment to energy, and all taboo topics, nothing is going to be off limits. Are you ready to live a life that feels just as good as it looks? Let's get fucking spiritual. Hi, my loves, and welcome back to another solo episode of the It's Fucking Spiritual podcast. We're on a different camera today. <laughs> So uh, if you are watching this on video, it looks a little closer up, which I love. I've been talking about this for a second. I want to feel closer to you guys on the camera. And so today we're trying something new. So let me know if you like it. And today's going to be a short and sweet episode. Um, I was feeling into what I wanted to do for this episode. And this just came through really loud and clear. And it's something that's actually been a really beautiful reminder in my life recently and also in a lot of my clients' lives as I've been talking with them. Um, it just seems to be a theme. So wanted to bring it here on the podcast too and talk to you about this if this would be helpful for you in your own life. And that is how to fall in love with your life. And not just when everything is going well, not just when you are feeling alive and lit up and when, you know, things are running really smoothly, when everything's going well at work, when everything's going well financially, but how do you fall in love with your life in the little moments? How do you fall in love with your life when things feel hard, when things feel sticky, when you're going through something challenging, when circumstances feel tough? How do you fall in love with your life when you're experiencing a low moment or you're experiencing self-doubt or you're experiencing conflict with a partner or you're experiencing stress at your job or whatever it is that's the circumstances coming up for you right now. How do we learn how to fall in love with our lives in the little moments? And this has been something that I've been thinking of recently. And this was actually sparked by a conversation with someone that is near and dear to me in my life. And I've been going through such a weird time this year, a beautiful time where I feel, and I've talked about this on the podcast before, and you guys know that I'm really honest with, <laughs> with where I'm at and where, what's going on in my life and what's true and alive for me. And I've been going through such a beautiful time and an evolution, but also a weird time where I realized like at the beginning of this podcast in the second season, I think I had this expectation of like, boom, I'm going to show up and that everything's going to just feel back to normal. And I realized that I'm a completely different person now. I'm a completely different person than I was in the first season and when I first started coaching. And I'm in, on the one hand, I'm more grounded, I'm more calm, I'm more sure of myself, I'm more um, fortified and feel more secure in my being than I ever have. And on the other end, I'm like, how do I show up now? Who do I be in this new evolution? How do I relay that message to you guys? How do I, what, what do I share about now? Like, how, how do I even share about the things that I used to share about aren't as resonant, resonant for me now, and yet I'm still in this evolution of who I'm becoming, and I'm learning so much relationally, and I'm learning so much about um, being in my body, and embodiment, and feminine energy, and, you know, like the proclivity to want to blow up everything. And I said to this dear friend of mine, oh, I just want to find my spark again. I want to find that spark. And he said to me, Rachel, maybe it's not about going out and finding your spark. 
maybe it's just giving yourself the permission to feel the spark that's here now. And I thought that was really profound and really sweet and really hit me in a really massive way because what I realized is how often do we wait until we find the joy? We wait until we have the aliveness, right? We wait until we find the spark again. We wait to fall in love with our life until things are going well. And I'm guilty of this too, even with all of the work that I've done to myself, even with all of the people that I've coached, even with all of the things that I know and the knowledge that I have and the work that I do and the practices that I, that I teach and that I embody, I still have moments of being like, when I get there, when I arrive, then I'll feel the thing. And it's such a subtle sense of outsourcing and so many of us do it in our lives. Where are you outsourcing? Where, where are you waiting to feel the joy? Where are you waiting to feel the happiness? Where are you waiting to fall in love with your life? Until you've arrived at some destination that you deemed as a worthy. Until everything is going right. Because the thing is, newsflash, this is the human experience. And there's always going to be bumps and different things that are happening in, the, in your life and circumstances in the world and society and your family. Yes, there's going to be times that are smoother than others. There's going to be times where everything's blown up. There's going to be times that we're in a dark night of the soul and a rock bottom. There's going to be times when we're fully elated. And there's going to be times where we're going to be a mix of all of these. And more often than not, we're probably a mix of all of these in general at one point or another. How do we fall in love with our life in these moments? If you feel deeply connected to this episode, if you are ready to step into the expanded version of you, if you are ready to learn how to reparent your inner child and repattern the ways that you show up in the world, I'm so excited to officially announce and invite you to my upcoming in-person retreat in Austin, Texas in August, August 22nd to 26th. There are two different style tickets with two very different price points. So I really tried to cater to everyone to make it accessible for you to come. Check it out in the show notes. We have a VIP that comes, stays in the house, um, has all meals included. We're all staying together. And then there's also an immersion style where you come to the location every single day. And I cannot wait to be in person with all of you to get to heal together. There's so much that you can do and collapse time when you are held in sisterhood for three to four days and allow yourself the space and time to really go into your um, inner wounding, go into your blocks, go into the things that are holding you back and learn to actually somatically repattern them in your nervous system. That is what we are going to be doing at this retreat so that you can plug back into the true you of who you really are and leave as the expanded woman that you know that you were meant to be. And it's called the Expanded Woman Retreat. I didn't say that. <laughs> but anyway, if you are feeling called to join us, tickets officially went live. So go check that out in the show notes and hopefully I will get to meet you and give you a huge hug in August. And what I wanted to pass along to you today is the little nuggets that have come through me as I've been asking myself this question. How do I amplify joy in this moment? How do I amplify the spark in this moment or whatever emotion it is that you want to feel? How do I tap into my aliveness in this moment now and cultivate it from within myself? Because it's not actually something that comes from out there. It's not something that comes from circumstance. It's not something that comes from the external, but it's something that is invoked inside of me because everything exists inside of me now. And if I can tap into that emotion right now without external circumstances changing, how can I allow myself to breathe that in in this moment and be an artist of creation and cultivate that experience for myself in this now moment. If you're watching this on video, I just closed my eyes because that was really abstract in the way that I shared it, but I want you to be able to feel the frequency of where I'm coming from. Whatever it is that you want to experience, if you want to fall in love with your life right now, maybe it's not about 
shifting anything external. Maybe it's about shifting the perception that is within you, shifting the embodiment, shifting the frequency that, of, that is within you. And shifting the frequency simply just means shifting the feeling, shifting the state of your body. I do this so much in my somatic embodiment work that I do with clients, that I do in my program at Expand. And if you were in the free three-day event regularly last week, um, then you will actually, by the time this airs, a couple weeks ago now, and then you had a felt shift of an experience of shifting the state of your body. And if you could sit here right now as you're listening to this, and we'll do this together, take a moment, take a deep breath in, and identify what it is that you want to feel in your life right now. Exhale. You want to feel more joy. What would allow you to feel more joy right now? What are the things that bring you joy? I was just talking to one of my clients, and she's a client who is so near and dear to my heart. And she talks about always, you know, being in the weeds and figuring out why, right? Why do I do this? Why, why is this coming up for me? Why do I do the thing I do? And then she shared an experience with me. I'm celebrating because I, I actually showed up. And I, um, you know, played at a, an event this weekend. And I felt so much aliveness. And I rem what I reminded her and what I remind myself and what I'm now reminding you is maybe about maybe falling in love with our life isn't about having everything perfect, but it's about amplifying the things that we love. It's about doing the things that bring us joy. It's about expressing what is in inside of us. What are you not expressing? What are you not sharing? What gifts are you stuffing down where you're not allowing yourself to be seen? Where are you not letting yourself experience joy in the presence of the small moments? On the walk with your dog in the morning? Or the fact that you have an abundance of food in your fridge? Or the fact that you have air to breathe right now in your lungs and you're listening to this and you're literally a human on a floating rock. How, when we zoom out and can't see that, how can we not fall in love with our life? If you won the lottery, because you did, you won the human jackpot of being the one sperm and the one egg that got together and out of the trillions and trillions of times that you could have been born, you were born right now in this exact time, in this body, to be alive on the planet in this here and now moment where you get to experience so many things. You literally won the jackpot of life. So how can we not look at our lives like that? And when we get in the day-to-day -day weeds and we get into the day-to-day -day emotions, because I do too, I, I get to zoom out and look at this and look at where am I not amplifying joy right now? Where am I not appreciating my life right now? Where am I not bringing gratitude for what is right now? So my invitation for you, some tangible tips, because I like to, I could riff on this stuff all day, right? But some tangible tips are really helpful. Write a list of the things that light you up and the things that bring you joy. What is that for you? For me, it's singing and playing guitar. It's calling friends and talking to them on the phone. It's going for walks. It's going to a dance class. It's laying in the grass. It's going and finding new different coffee shops because I work at home <laughs> and it's very, very easy for me not to leave the house. It's going to new gatherings and meeting new people. Doing something that's novel can be something that brings us joy. Even if it's scary to do it at first. But what are those things for you? What are the things that you loved as a little kid? These are all really good questions to ask yourself. And then look at that list and ask yourself, how often am I doing these and incorporating these in my daily life? Maybe it's cooking really nourishing food and then being present with that experience. So write the list then look at where am I doing that in my life? And often you might find that you're not doing nearly as many things that amplify joy now. And then you're going to write a second list. 
what are all the qualities that I love about myself? And as you look at that list and read that list, allow yourself and practice expanding and breathing in the gratitude for yourself of all of the things that you love about yourself. You could even write a list of all the things that you've accomplished. Whatever feels right and true for you. But reorienting away from the things that are challenging and reorienting back to giving yourself the recognition that you deserve. Because if you're listening to this podcast, I know you're on a, a self-improvement journey. I know you're on a journey of, of evolution. And I also know that you have a desire for an even greater life. You have a desire for self-actualization. You have a desire to bring forth what is inside of you. You have a desire to fall in love with your life. And that desire in and of itself means you have a good heart and are integrous and loving and you dream. Because people that don't dream don't listen to things like this. So when we're not in love with our life, often it can look like um, or often it's because we're focusing on all of the circumstances that need to change. And I'm not saying those things will go away by doing this. I'm not saying that there won't still be real problems. I'm not saying that there won't be things. It's not about spiritually bypassing. It's about the amplification of the other truth. We're so wired for the negative. Our, our brain is naturally hardwired to focus on what's not working, because that's what keeps us safe. But when we recognize that we don't have to change anything to fall in love with ourselves and to fall in love with amplifying joy, it just takes a perspective shift and it takes intention. So maybe our spark isn't about going out and finding it or waiting for it to be cultivated again. That's something that I've done in the season, you guys, as I've totally been like, wow, I have like more embodiment than I've ever had, but then I don't know. I, I've been in this like, I don't know how to like share it. And then I realized that the spark gets cultivated through just sitting here and pressing record. The spark gets cultivated through amplifying the things that we don't typically amplify. So where can you fall a little bit more in love with your life and yourself right now in this now moment? And where can you amplify joy? So I hope some of you needed that message today. If you did, DM me on Instagram. I always love to hear it. And as always, I love you. And I'm standing for you to have the most alive, lit up, free, aligned life where you deeply trust yourself and where you get to create a life um, that you're really proud of and that you love. And with that, I'll see you in the next episode. And with that, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the It's Fucking Spiritual podcast. I am so glad that you're here. And if this episode resonated with you, I invite you to share this with a friend that you feel needs to hear it. And if you are really feeling the love and support for this show, this podcast thrives off of your listens and your reviews. So I would love if you could leave us an honest review. We would love to hear your feedback your thoughts, your questions, and it helps us get this podcast in the hands of more people and would mean so much to me to receive your support. So thank you.